Alrighty, I'm going to teach you about the Great Depression. The Great Depression was a time of economic problems in the United States where uh, the economy just kind of stopped, people lost their jobs, people lost their homes, factories closed, uh, farmers lost their farms, banks closed down. It was a hot mess. The Great Depression happened between 1929 and 1939, right up to almost the beginning of World War II. This is going to teach you about the cause of the Great Depression. Now, economists often disagree as to what the cause of the Great Depression was, but it's really kind of simple. People ran out of money. Why'd they run out of money? Well, that's where the complication comes in. So, in order to explain about the Great Depression, I need to kind of start somewhere. And where I want to start with is you. Well, not you personally, but let's just say that there's some person alive in 1927, 1928, into the roaring 20s, life is pretty good, and, you know, the economy's booming, and here's this you person. So let's just talk about you. You have a job. Maybe a nice job. Maybe you work in a tire factory. Maybe you work for Ford Motor Company. You know, maybe you, you work for a grocery store, whatever. But you've got a job, and you get paid money. And now that you get paid, well, you've got to pay your bills. You've got to buy groceries. You've got to buy stuff at other stores, clothes and shoes and whatnot. Everyone has to buy stuff, right? Well, one of the other things you have to do is to pay your mortgage. Now, what a mortgage is, it's a bank loan that you took out in order to buy your home because most people don't have $100,000 in cash sitting somewhere. So they have some amount of money and then they go to the bank and they get a loan for the rest of the money and that's called a mortgage. And of course, you have to repay that loan. So let's say you've got a nice job and you're paying all your bills and you have some money left over. Where do you keep your money? Well, unlike most people, you don't keep your money in a mattress and you don't keep it buried in a jar in the backyard. No, most people deposit it in a bank. And there's reasons for that. Banks are safe. People, you know, they might rob them, but they're not going to take, you, you know, everybody's money. And sometimes the bank pays you interest. More on that later. So let's just talk about banks for a minute. First thing I want to do is put on my banker's hat. Yes, this is my fancy banker's hat. Rich guys wear this. So let's say the bank has your money, right? So you deposit your money on the bank and they pay you, say, 3% interest because interest is rent money on money. They're going to use your money and so they kind of rent your money and that's called interest. Let's say they pay you 3%. So they got your money and they're going to lend it out to others. Well, who are they going to lend it to? Well, let's say they lend it to farmers because farmers, they might need to borrow money to get more seed to plant more crops or maybe they want to buy a tractor or, you know, maybe they just want to buy more land. So they take out a bank loan uh, and that way they can plant more food. The bank could lend it to a business because maybe the business wants to expand. They want to build a bigger factory. They want to hire more workers. They want to create a new product line. And sometimes that takes money. So they lend it to business. Sometimes they lend it to homeowners who want to buy a mortgage so they can buy a house with the bank loan. Now, all these people, they pay interest to the bank. The bank takes your money and pays you 3% interest. The bank lends it out at, let's say, 10% interest. So the bank is making 7% interest on your money. One of the places that this bank used to lend out a lot of money to were investors. Now, what an investor would do is an investor is someone who would borrow money in order to buy stock in a corporation. Now, you remember when we talked about the second industrial revolution, we talked about corporations. If you have a person that owns his own business and he wants to expand it, he can either go to the bank and borrow money or he can sell a percentage of his business in the form of stock. And people buy stock in a company and then they'll sell the stock to somebody else who will sell it to somebody else. And that is called a stock exchange because you're exchanging stock with other people. The biggest one in the world is the New York Stock Exchange. So these investors would borrow money and go to the New York Stock Exchange and buy stock in other corporations. Because I want to make sure you absolutely understand this. When you take your money to the bank, it's not like they have paper money in some drawer with your name on it. No, your money has been lent out to other people. So let's follow this investor trail. Let's say an investor decides to buy some stock. And the way they did it back then, which is now illegal, they would buy something on margin. Now, 
What margin was was this. If they wanted to buy, say, $100,000 in stock in, uh, let's say, um, a Ford Motor Company, they buy $100,000, they put up 10% in cash that they have, $10,000, and they go to the bank and they borrow 90% for what they want to borrow. So they put $10,000 of their own money, but then they borrow $90,000 from the bank in order to buy stock. Now, the Great Depression kind of started in 1929 with something called the stock market crash. The prices on the stock market dramatically dropped, and there's a lot of complicated reasons for that. But let's just say, for the sake of this teaching, that something happens, because something did happen. What economists interestingly call this is a black swan event. Uh, you know, because swans are normally white. And every once in a while you get an egg that hatches and a black swan will come out. And they're not really sure why that happens. But that's called a black swan event. Something unforeseeable happens. So let's say something happens. The value and the price of the stock begins to go down. Now, you have borrowed $90,000 on stock that was worth $100,000, but if the value starts to go down, let's say that you can't sell it for maybe more than, say, $50,000. Well, where's the rest of that money going to come from? Because if you have to sell that stock to repay the loan, you borrow $90,000, the most you can sell it for is, say, $70,000 or $50,000. Where's the rest of that money going to come from? And that's the problem, because the investor can't repay the loan. And if you can't repay the loan, that means that the bank can't get the money back. Whose money? Yeah. Whose money? You go to the bank. Your weekly trip. You're going to go to the bank and withdraw some money because you've got to go to the grocery store to buy you know, groceries for the week. And you go to the bank and the bank says this, well, your money isn't here. What in the world? Where's my money? Well, your money was lent to an investor who bought stock, who can't repay it, and your money is now gone. Now what? Well, now what? Part one. You've got no money. You can't buy food at the store. All right? Well, what about the store? See, if you can't buy stuff at the store, where is the store going to get the money to pay its workers? What's going to happen to them? Why, they're going to get fired. Because the, the store can't pay them because people aren't buying groceries at the store. Okay, so those workers get paid. How are those workers going to pay their bills? How are those workers who have a mortgage like you, how are they going to pay their mortgage? Because they've now lost their job. So the bank can't collect on its loans. Nobody has any money to pay back the bank. And that means more people can't get their money. So what do people do? They have to stop buying. They can't go to the store and buy stuff. Remember, there is no such thing as credit cards in 1929. You paid cash. People stop buying. All right, well, if a business can't sell, people have stopped buying. A business can't sell. A business will close down. A business will fire its workers. Guess who loses their job? You do. Now it's even worse. Because not only do you not have any money to buy groceries with, you don't have a job, so you don't have any new money coming in. Maybe I ought to take this banker hat off. So, you now got no money left. Here's what, part two, you've lost your job. Guess what happens to your home? Because the bank will take your home away from you. You borrowed money based on that home. You can't pay the money, the bank takes, takes the home. They kick you out, they kept the home. Now you're homeless and you're hungry because you've got no money to pay for food. And what happens if thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands don't have money for food? What about the farmers? See, they can't sell because there are no buyers, because people have no money. And so they can't repay their bank loan, and they lose their land. Just like you borrowed money to buy your house, the farmers borrowed money to buy land, the bank takes the land. 
Now, that means that more people can't get their money out of the bank because the farmers couldn't repay it. It was lent to the farmers. They can't repay it because they can't sell their crops. They can't sell their crops because people don't have any food. Why don't have any food? They lost their job. Why they lose their job? Because people didn't have the money to buy stuff. Everyone stops buying. Corporations go bankrupt. They fire workers and close down. And the workers have no money. Back to the investors for just a little bit. You really shouldn't feel sorry for these people because they were trying to cheat it anyway. The investors lose everything they got. And of course, that means they can't repay the banks. Nobody can repay the banks. And there's no money in the banks. No one has any money. And that's really kind of how the Depression started. People rushed to the bank to get their money, and the money wasn't there, and suddenly they had nothing to spend. There was no one who could buy. There was no one who could sell because there was no one who could buy. So businesses began to close down. They fired their workers. Their workers couldn't spend. They lose their houses. Far. It was just a mess. It was a hot mess, and it was going to get worse until someone had to step in and try and fix things. And in 1932, a guy by the name of Franklin Roosevelt was elected as president, and he said he was going to fix things. So the next one we do of these, we'll talk about the effects of the Great Depression. I'll give you some numbers about unemployment rates and things of that nature, and what happened to American society, and especially how government tried, stepped in and tried to help. That'll be the Great Depression, part two.